Welcome to the Mirror of the World and thank you very much for watching this video. If you are watching for the very first time, you're welcome to join us and I want to encourage you to go on our YouTube channel, you know, and you will see all the other videos that we've done so far. We started January 1st, 2018 and we've been reading the chapter of the Bible um, a day. I pray to God that as we grow, go through his word, the Lord will reveal his mind and his purpose to you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, um, I just got encouraged about reading the word of God. You know, um, we're going to be uh, reading Joshua chapter 24, and that's the last chapter of the book of Joshua today. And uh, I want to do these things. Uh, <laughs> I want to do this thing. Um, so I've got a question and there's a price. And uh, the question is this, what chemical did they use to preserve the body of Joseph before he was finally buried in Shechem? So I want you to tell us how many years his bones was kept for, uh, what chemical was used to preserve it, and what did you learn from the study? And uh, there's a prize. The winner gets 20 pounds from the church or equivalent. So if you are watching the video from you know outside the uk you will get the equivalent of 20 pounds in whatever currency of the world you're spending don't worry uh the lord will give us wisdom in terms of how we're going to send that to you we just want to encourage somebody to read the bible because this is key this is really important now my name is buki adioshun um the reason why we do the mirror of the world is we want to encourage someone to read a chapter of the bible not as a tick box exercise in the sense that you know i've done my daily devotion and that's it i want the pastor to know i want to tell someone no uh, we want you to read it to the point whereby uh, the word of god begin to dwell richly in you like colossians chapter 3 you know <clears throat> verse 16 say let the word that christ speak let it dwell take its root in you and uh, we believe that as, he, as you read the word of the Lord, something is going to happen. You're going to see the image that God wants you to become because we were told that the word of God is like a mirror. And when we see it, when we read it, we see the glory of God and then we are transformed into the image that we see in the word of God. So that's the reason we're doing this. Um, the other reason is because we want to pray. We want to join our faith with you if you are sick. And some people are like, okay, there's no one to pray with me, no one to visit with me in the hospital. So if you're in the hospital, you can tune up because we do this on a daily basis. So you have the opportunity to have someone joining their faith with you to pray for your loved one in the hospital. You just need to switch it, switch it on on your mobile phone. Everybody, most people have got mobile phones and then Facebook account and then YouTube account and ad account and then you can uh log in and then watch your program live or you can even watch it afterwards and of course we want somebody to sign up for jesus you know the most important decision we want somebody to give their life to christ or rededicate their life to jesus christ now i'm not going to try and do a recap of everything <laughs> that um uh we've read so far in the book of joshua an amazing an amazing book joshua chapter one. Oh wow Oh Lord, uh, I'm telling you, uh, the only thing I can say is to encourage you to go on our YouTube channel and go and see all the videos that we've done. Uh, subscribe to our channel and then, you know, like it. You know, I'm not big, I'm not into marketing, uh, but if the Lord is laying it upon your heart to do so, please go ahead and do it and then share it with people if it has been a blessing to you. But in, our, in the last chapter that we read, uh, we said that with God's help, you will do much more. Actually, Joshua told the children of Israel that, you know, um, one of you, with the help of God, one of you will chase a thousand soldiers, you know. Um, and then he, he told them something fundamental. He said, look at all this land that the Lord has given you. He said, if the Lord has given you this land, he will give you more. So, and I said that, you know, I think one of the one of the words we receive in that received in that video was that you will get a better deal. You know, if you think that what you have currently is the best deal you could ever have, I'm telling you the word of the Lord, you will get 
a better deal. And then um, Joseph, uh, sorry, Joshua told them that the people must cleave unto the Lord. They must serve the Lord. So today we're going to be reading Joshua chapter 24. So let's do it together. I want you to please get your Bible and we're going to read Joshua chapter 24 together. So let's go. I'm going to be reading from the easy to read Bible translation that I've found so useful, so helpful. Um, I just want to encourage people to start reading the Bible by reading the King James Version so that you don't lose the context. Um, so Joshua chapter 24, Joshua called all the tribes of Israel to meet together at Shechem. Then Joshua called the older ones, heads of family, judges, and the officers of Israel. These men stood before God. Then Joshua spoke to all the people. He said, I'm telling you what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to you. A long time ago, your ancestors lived on the other side of the Euphrates River. I am talking about men like Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahor. At that time, they worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham out of the land of the other side of the river. I led him through the land of Canaan and gave him many children. I gave Abraham his son Isaac. I gave Isaac two sons, Jacob, Esau. To Esau, I gave the land around the mountains, mountains of Seir. Jacob and his sons did not live there. They went to live in the land of Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron to Egypt. I wanted them to bring my people out of Egypt. I caused many terrible things to happen to the people of Egypt. Then I brought your people out of Egypt. When I brought your ancestors out of Egypt, they came to the Red Sea. And the men of Egypt were chasing them. They were chariots and men on horses. So the people asked me, the Lord, so the people asked me, the Lord, for help, and I caused great, great trouble to come to the men of Egypt. I caused the sea to cover them. You yourself saw what I did to the army of Egypt. After that, you lived in the desert for a long time. Then I brought you to the land of the Amorites, east of the Jordan River. Those people fought against you, but I allow you to defeat them. I gave you the power to destroy them, and you took control of that land. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, and the king of Moab prepared to fight against the Israelites. The king sent for Balaam, the son of Baal, to curse him. But I refused to listen to Balaam's prayer. So he asked me to bless you, and I save you from the enemy. Then you went across the Jordan River to the city of Jericho. The people in Jericho fought against you. Also, the Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hittites, Gigashites, Hivites, and Jebusites fought against you. But I allow you to defeat them. As your army went forward, I sent the hornet ahead of them and made the people leave the land, as I did to the two Amorite kings. It was not your sword and bows that brought you victory. I, the Lord, gave that land to you. You didn't work for that land. I gave it to you. You did not build those cities. I gave them to you. And now you live in that land and in those cities. You have vineyards and olive trees, but you did not have to plant those gardens. Then Joshua said to the people, Now you have heard the Lord's word, so you must respect the Lord and sincerely serve him. Throw away the false god that your ancestors worshipped. That was something that happened a long time ago on the other side of Euphrates River and in Egypt. Now you must serve only the Lord your God. But maybe you don't want to serve the Lord. You must choose for yourself today. Today you must decide who you will serve. Will you serve the gods that your ancestors worship when they live on the other side of the Euphrates River? Or will you serve the gods of the Amorites who lived in this land? You must choose for yourself. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, We will never stop following the Lord. We will never serve other God. We, we know that it was the Lord God who brought, out, who brought our people out of Egypt. We were slaves in that land, but he did great things for us there. He brought us out of that land and protected us while we traveled through other lands. The Lord helped us defeat the people living in this land. He helped us defeat the Amorites who lived in this land where we are now. So we will continue to serve the Lord because he is our God. Then Joshua said, you will not be able to continue serving the Lord. God is holy and God hates his people worshipping other gods. He will not forgive you if you turn against him like that. If you leave the Lord and serve other gods, it will cause terrible things to happen to you. He will destroy you. He has been good to you. But if you turn against him, he will destroy you. 
Then the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, Look around at yourself and the people with you. Do you all know and agree that you have chosen to serve the Lord? Are you all witnesses to this? The people answered, Yes, it is true. We all see that we have chosen to serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, So throw away the false god that you have among you. Love the Lord, the God of Israel, with all your heart. Then the people said to Joshua, We will serve the Lord our God. We will obey him. So that day, Joshua made an agreement for the people. He made this agreement at the town called Shechem. It became a law for them to follow. Joshua wrote these things in the book of the law of God. Then he found a large stone to be the proof of this agreement. He put the stone under the oak tree near the Lord's holy tent. Then Joshua said to all the people, This stone will help you remember what we said today. This stone was here when the Lord was speaking to us today. So this stone will be something that helps you remember what happened today. The stone will be a witness against you. It will stop you from turning against your God. Then Joshua told the people to go home. So everyone went back to his own land. After that, the Lord's servant, Joshua's son of Nun, died. He was 110 years old. Joshua was buried on his own land at Timnasera in the hill of country Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. The Israelites served the Lord during the time Joshua was living. After Joshua died, the people continued to serve the Lord while their leaders were alive. This these were the leaders who had seen what the Lord had done for Israel. When Israelites left Egypt, they carried the bones from the body of Joseph with them. They buried the bones of Joseph at Shechem on the land that Jacob had bought from the sons of Hamon. The father of that man named Shechem, Jacob, had bought that land for hundred pieces of pure silver. This land belonged to Joseph's children. Aaron's son Eliezer died and was buried at Gibeah in the hill countries of Ephraim. Gibeon had been given to Eliezer's son in years. Praise the Lord. Now, before I go into my note, I saw something that the Lord wants to do for someone today. Um, Joshua was, you know, uh, recanting, you know, uh, in terms of, um, I mean, he was telling them the story of what happened of the great deliverance of what God did for them. Verse 9, Then Balak, the son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against the Israelites. You know, um, there was a conspiracy against the Israelites, and somebody was called to curse them. But the people didn't even know. But, you know, the Lord protected them. So uh, the king of Moab, you know, uh, sent for Balaam, you know, um, and the king of uh, and the son of Zippor, Balak, and um, the king of Moab, they sent for Balaam, who happens to be a prophet, to curse the children of Israel because they know that you know that's the only thing that's going to prevent them from destroying them. So and God said, but I refused to listen to Balaam's prayer. Can you see that? You know, I just I just love the Bible because when you when you oh Lord help me. When, when you listen, when you read this account, you know, in the book of Numbers, we were just told that, you know, um, Balaam wanted to go, and at a point in time, the donkey refused to, to go, and then the, the, donkey, the donkey spoke. You know, but here we are saying, he said, I refuse, you know, I refuse to listen to Balaam's prayer. You know, that was, even though when we read this account in the book of Numbers, we're not really sure whether Balaam didn't make the attempt to curse the children of Israel. But God said, even though he said those prayers in his heart, I refuse. And eventually, you know, um, God made him to bless the children of Israel. And that's where we got things that God cannot lie. He's not a son of man that he should lie. The scripture, the popular scripture that we quote. But this is what the Lord wants to do for someone. Um, in the course of this week or this month, from the time you, you watch this video, um, there is a conspiracy to attack you. Some people have planned some things against you behind your back. The Lord is going to refuse their prayer. The Lord will now. The Lord will refuse their prayer. The Lord will expose them, and that conspiracy will be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Rather than you being affected negatively, well, I don't know what the plan is, but you know, they've gathered together and I said, 
you are not going to get a promotion you are not going to get something that belongs to you rightfully belongs to you they they, they are standing in the way you know so they've they've gang up and they look for somebody who can stop you if somebody they think probably is more powerful but the lord you know uh we refuse their prayer the lord we expose them and that which they say you won't get you will get it and you will get much more in the mighty name of jesus that's the word of the lord you know that's that's the thing i love about reading the bible i tell you when you read the bible you will see the word of god something jump jump up to you jump out to you from the pages of the bible you were like wow i, I didn't see that before you know we, we, were, we were doing bible study today at church and uh, and then we we read a portion in the a portion in the in the book of john uh john chapter 6 was the chapter that um john chapter six, yeah john chapter 6 was the chapter that we read and then we read a portion whereby you know there was a great storm the disciples were on the sea and the same sea where there was a great storm jesus christ was walking on the water and then the moment jesus christ entered the boat immediately they arrived at where they are and and, and the spirit of god just quickened that in my spirit they said when you are going through storms of life invite jesus immediately you will get to where you are going wow now two things from my note um the first thing is um from from we continue with the validatory speech you know um joshua you know was about to die he realized that his time is up and then he called the children of israel together and then he um asked them uh, he, he, he asked them to come you know so that he can tell them some treat some things he believed the lord wants him to tell them and the two two key lessons that i want us to see from you know that chapter the first one is it's important to let people know our story you know um when my father passed on and um you know um unfortunately i also at the same time lost my a senior brother too and but you know so they were calling me the children called me and they asked me some questions they say oh we want to write something about his biography and then we needed some information and we we thought you are the only one who we know this but i told them i say i'm sorry i don't know you know and and that's 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 what we found ourselves in that's the situation even not just about spiritual things alone we don't teach our children story we don't tell them things they need to know about us and this is important it's important that we tell them the story of your of our lives tell them where you are coming from tell them who your father is tell them you know where you come from don't just say oh i'm from you know peckham you know those who live in united kingdom or don't say i'm from lagos no 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 you before you go to lagos you came from somewhere so this is what uh joshua did you know um and then when we are telling them our story it's important to also tell them about the wonderful works of god in our life declare his wondrous work you know joshua called the elders of israel and told them the story of their great grandfathers and how they have entered into what they did not labor for you know it's interesting that's something i want us to see there god gave the promise to abraham that look i'm going to give your descendants this land where you are standing right now so it's got nothing to do with them you know it wasn't because they worked hard it's not it wasn't because you know and that's why god said to them so he said god say i the lord gave you that land i gave that land to you you didn't work for that land i gave it to you you did not build those cities and it's true they i gave them to you and now you live in that land verse 13 of joshua chapter 20 uh, joshua chapter 24 he said and now you live in that land and in those city you have vineyards and all uh, vineyards and olive trees but you did not have to plant those gardens there are some things that you have come into not because you labored for it because there are people who have gone ahead of you and they labored and you have entered into their harvest so it's important that we tell our children the story we tell them where we're coming from we tell them how god helped us it's important for us to to tell them that look there was a time that you know we we couldn't even afford you know to 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 go to you know um asda you know whatever the supermarket is in your country i mean there was a time we were buying smart prices there was a time you know we have some difficulties or challenges there was a time we were visiting the hospital this is what the lord has done for us there was a time that 
We didn't even have any papers where immigrants, we thought we were going to be deported and you know, the Lord came through for us and he did great work in our life. It's important for you to let your children know. You know, sometimes people might be wondering and they might say, oh, why is he so passionate about the things of the kingdom like that? Why, why is he so... You know why? Why is he, is he the only one? You know, is he the only one? Why? Why is? Why is he? What's his own? What's his problem? Is because they don't know your story. Um, they don't know what God has done for you. You know, if you tell people your story, if you tell people what God has done for you, you know, they will appreciate why you love God the way you love God. You know, um, some of us the difficulty sometimes we have even at our place of work. For us to be able to um, declare our identity, you know, to reveal to them what we are Christians is because we thought we got those jobs by ourselves. We thought that it is through our effort because you did well at the interview or because you sow a seed. But when you realize that it is by God's favor that you have what you have. You will not be ashamed to be able to tell them about Jesus. You will not be ashamed because, you know, uh, it's a question of the father, you know, um, you know, a thought occurred to me as I was preparing for this study, and I just thought about it that if Daniel were to be living in our days, you know, um, I think he was more or less like maybe the third in command to the king. You know, he was occupying um, a very senior position. If Daniel was to be in our days, you know, and after the king decreed that nobody should worship any other girl, I'm sure his Christian brothers will go to brother Daniel and say, Brother Daniel, you know, we need to use some wisdom, you know. We need to use some, some wisdom. You know, you got family, you know, and you have to feed, feed them and you have other people depending on you. You know, you don't have to pray during that time. Or you do it, you know, it's just it's just for the number of days that they can. And then you can continue to do your prayer again. But Daniel realized that, look, it was God who put me in that place. He, he remember where he was coming from. He remembers when they have to. You know, they, 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 they told the kings, uh, uh, the person who was put in charge of them while they were training that he should allow them to just feed on vegetables alone. He remembered how, you know, uh, God gave him favor. You know, he remembered all this and said, look, I've gone too far for me to deny God now. So I'm going to continue to pray. I'm going to continue to do whatever it is that I am doing. You know, uh, someone asked a question sometimes. He said, uh, is it okay for us to use mobile phone or to check our phone to check text messages and things like that while we're in church? And I just ask myself a, sim a simple question: You know, should we even be talking about things like that? Of obviously, uh, the person ask a honest question probably because um, the, he or she happens to be in the church and find it disturbing. But I watched all the answers that were given, and I was just I was just laughing. You know, I was laughing because I I just you know part of my own comment was that you know if any of those people giving those answers if they were to be standing before her majesty the queen or they were standing before a president president of america or president of a whatever country you came from you know will they be checking their mobile phone it's because they are waiting for a promise they are waiting for a word from the man so how do we regard god so it's important for us to think about what god has done in our life and the fact that we think about what God has done in our life, that look, the same thing that happened to you, that other people that you will see living today. So that's going to affect your passion and your attitude for the things of the kingdom of God. So Joshua now challenged them. You know, uh, he said, look, he said, you have come into a harvest that you have not labored for. So I believe some of us, we have already entered into a harvest that we have not labored for. And we are still going to enter into so many harvests that we have not labored for. God is going to bring us into some things that, you know, we didn't work for it. We will just get there and, you know, we will just enjoy the blessing. So Joshua now encouraged them and challenged them. And he said, look, I need you to respect the Lord and sincerely serve him. You know, Proverbs 10, 27 says, respect for the Lord will add years to our life. Proverbs 22, 4 says, By humility and fear of the Lord are riches and honors and life. Now, I want us to quickly look at what does it mean to respect the Lord? You know, there are some things I'm trying to break down, some of the things that uh, we, we say in the body of Christ now. We say things like you love God. What does it mean to love God? 
Well, because everybody is loving God nowadays, you know. <laughs> and I say, oh, you must have a personal relationship with God. What do you mean by having a personal relationship with God? I actually heard somebody saying that, oh, actually, um, uh, we should stop going to church because the church that the Bible is referring to is not the physical building. Yes, I agree with you. The church is not the physical building. The church is the gathering of saints, collection of saints together. And the person will say in your house, in your neighborhood, I haven't had a pastor saying something like that. Or your family together stay, stay there just because they are attacking titan you know be, they don't even know some of those people they haven't even read the bible to understand the principle of tithe anyway i'm not going to talk about that today so um they, they, they now say oh the church you know you can gather people together and do things like that and your neighborhood and 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 stuff like that so uh that means it's your personal relationship so when we say some things what do we mean by you love god what do you mean by personal relationship what do you mean by it you know um, uh, the fear of God, the respect of God. Let's see what Jesus said. Jesus gave a similar validatory speech, you know, like Joshua did to his disciple. He started in John chapter 14, and you can really go in forward in terms of some of the things that he said. And he said this, which is really fundamental, which is what I want to leave us with today. Everything Joshua did in Joshua chapter 24, all he was saying was that, look, keep God's commandment. Make sure that those commandments are in your heart. That was what God told him. He said, you must meditate on it day and night. He said, you must meditate on it and you must keep it in your heart, you know, so that you will prosper in whatever you do. Now, let's listen to what Jesus said. John chapter 14, verses 23 to 24. Jesus answered, if anyone really loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. Jesus didn't say he will go to church. He didn't say he will read the word. He said he will keep my word. So you go to church to go and learn the word of God. And after you have learned the word of God, you are supposed to keep those words in your heart. We were told that and Mary pondered over those things and she kept those words in her heart. That was what happened. Verse 24 of John 14 says, One who does not really love me does not keep my word. Can we see that? So when we are talking about you must love God, you must love God. We tell, oh, I love God. You must love God. What it really means to love God is keeping God's word in your heart, his teachings. So that means the first step, you cannot keep what you don't know. So the first step in keeping God's word in your heart is that you must know what Jesus said. And then he's not dead. And then there are some things that he didn't say. So which we were told the Holy Spirit will tell us. So the first step is to know what Jesus says. So let me let me encourage you because uh, even we're going to pray for the sick now. You know, keeping God's word in your body will make you whole. You know, and I'm not just talking about confession that we do. Oh, I'm sick now. I begin to confess the word of God. You don't need to get to the place where you come down with illness. God's word. I said that um, God's word is the only medicine, is the only medication without a side effect. You know, you can never have overdose when it comes to God's word. You know, if there's anything that he's going to do for you, it's just going to make you more mature and make you more perfect. You know, it will never cause any side effect. So when you keep God's word in your heart, it will make you whole. You know, so when you let it take root, dwell richly in your heart, you know, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 say, Let the word spoken by Christ, again, let the word spoken by Christ have its home in your heart and mind and dwell in you in all richness as you teach and admonish and train one another in all insight and intelligence and wisdom in spiritual things as you sing psalm, hymns, and spiritual songs, making melody with God in your heart. So, one of the signs of you keeping God's word in your heart is that you begin to sing psalms. You know, some churches now, they don't even sing hymns again, you know. Um, anyway, praise the Lord. Uh, he say, he's now, he says, sing psalm, hymns, and spiritual songs. Spiritual songs, you know, making melodies in our heart. That is what it means to respect the Lord and to serve him. You come under the authority of his word. You submit your body. You submit your life to the authority of the word of God. And you say that as far as this body is, co is concerned, whatever God's word says is what you are going to do. I submit my body. 
He literally said, I submit my body to this word that is in, in my heart. So we have to choose for ourselves. Like Joshua told them, he said, you must choose for yourself. Say, but as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. You know, we will submit ourselves to the authority of God's word. Thank you very much for watching. We are going to be reading the book of Habakkuk. But before we go, let's pray for those who are sick. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. Thank you for people who are watching this video right now that are sick. Lord, I ask you that you will make them whole. Lord, let your power that is at work within them, let the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead that is at work in them, let that power begin to energize them. Let that power begin to give life to them. Let that power begin to make right whatever is wrong in Jesus' name. I come against every spirit of confusion in the mighty name of Jesus. So to someone tired of religion who being confused, I ask you will reveal yourself unto that person in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for all these miracles, and I praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, before we go, I want you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your savior i want you to be translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god i want you to come out of darkness and i want you to come into the life of god i want you to come um i want you to be to be accepted as a child of god jesus christ say anyone who believes in him um is not condemned but he who does not believe is condemned already i want you to come out of condemnation to come into the realm where god is going to tell you say uh, neither have i condemned you go and sin no more if you want to accept jesus christ as your lord and as your savior and um uh, you want to become born again i want you to please uh, say these prayers after me say heavenly father i confess that i am a sinner I repent of my sins today. I believe you die for me so I can have eternal life. I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for saying that prayer. And I want you to find a local church around you that you can be part of. If you want to be part of our fellowship, you are more than welcome to join us. We have a series of online activities you're going to see our flyer on the screen shortly on um, every tuesday we have a prayer meeting online from 9 to 9 30 and then on fridays we have our online interactive bible study and then on daily basis we do the mirror of the world where we read a chapter of the bible if you want to be part of the fellowship we meet at looting time you are more than invited to Come and join us you know at one of our meetings so you will see our email address and our telephone number at the bottom of the screen uh please do write us and get in touch with us and then we will give you the details on how you can be part of our meeting may god himself the god who makes everything holy and whole make you holy and whole put you together spirit soul and body and keep you fit for the coming of our master jesus christ the one who called you is completely dependable if he said it it will do it. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, please join us for a fresh edition of the Mirror of the World when we will read the book of Habakkuk. Oh my God, what a wonderful book of the Bible. I'm really looking forward to it. Until I come your way for a fresh edition of the Mirror of the World, thank you very much for watching. If this has been a blessing, please don't forget to share the video and go on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it, you know, like it, do whatever you can do. Uh, join us in sharing the good news. God bless you and bye.